So what happens in a sudden cardiac arrest is that basically our heart functions by producing heartbeats which pumps blood to the body. So for the heartbeat to be produced, there's an electrical activity that goes uh, through the heart. It starts in the sinoatrial node and then it spreads along the heart muscles. And then when that electrical activity is complete, uh, the heart muscle pumps and a beat is produced and the blood flows through our heart. So when you get a sudden cardiac arrest, uh, there's a problem there's an abnormality in the electrical activity of the heart. So because of that, suddenly your, start, uh, your heart stops beating. So because of an electrical abnormality in the heart, your heart has stopped beating. So basically, your muscle is not going to produce a heartbeat for blood to flow. So basically, your heart m muscle is just quivering. It's like in a static, it's static, you know. So that is what happens. So that is now a sudden cardiac arrest. And if it's not intervened, if intervention has not, is not given, so that sudden cardiac arrest turns into a sudden cardiac death. That means that a person loses his life. So basically, so, um, electrical abnormalities in the heart, um, there are various causes and reasons behind it, okay? So when you look at the commonest cause, about 70%, why would you would get an electrical abnormality in your heart is because of a heart attack, a myocardial infarct. So basically, in a myocardial infarct, you have a blockage of blood vessel that is supplying blood to the muscle of the heart. So for your heart muscles to work well, it has to receive blood through the blood supplies and in a myocardial infarct there is a blockage and that blockage will not allow blood supply to reach to your heart muscle and the heart muscle will not work well. Okay. So what happens that there is a big difference between a sudden cardiac arrest and a heart attack is that in a sudden cardiac arrest our time frame of acting to save a person is very small. In a sudden cardiac arrest you have basically minutes, a few minutes like immediately one minute to about an hour to intervene and reverse the arrest so that you don't proceed and get a sudden cardiac death. So what happens is that in, because your electrical activity of the heart has stopped, so that person, uh, what the symptoms you see in someone is that person will suddenly collapse and that person will not be breathing and that person will be pulseless. So if you try and take a pulse, there will be no pulse and they will not be having, you will not see them breathing. So that should hint you that this person is in a sudden cardiac arrest. And most of these uh, episodes usually happen outside the hospital. So you'll, you'll find, you'll, you'll see that um, the fate of a person who has got a sudden cardiac arrest uh, depends on who is nearby. So if a nearby person is well trained, he knows how to do CPR because that is what we need. Because we want to restore the electrical activity of the heart so the heart can start pumping. So we need to do to do a CPR so the nearby people who is observing and who sees that someone has collapsed and sees that there is no pulse, there is no breathing, he has to suddenly and uh, you know very fast think and start a CPR. So CPR is basically card cardiopulmonary resuscitation whereby you are going to compress the chest wall okay and uh, if that is a trained person you do it 30 times and you have to give two breaths uh, what we call a mouth to mouth breath yeah so that that person uh, we try and restore the uh, the the circulation and the breathing and now so and the other thing that really helps is a defibrillator so so many times now that in big malls in uh, at, in so many places because this is a common occurrence that people do get sudden cardiac arrests so you can see that if someone has uh, really seen that someone has collapsed these people come and they have fibrillator so they come, they open for you, and the instructions are self-explanatory. You can just see what needs to be done, and that person can be given a shock that can bring back the heart to a, uh, to a functioning rhythm. But if this is not done, if a CPR and a defibrillator is not been given on right time, then we can, lead, we can get a sudden cardiac death. So basically, as we've said, that the commonest cause behind, the, one of the commonest cause is a heart attack, a myocardial infarct. And we do have other causes, yeah? 
we do have uh, like non-cardiac causes like trauma, infection, uh, sepsis, sometimes a clot in your lung. So you may never know what will, will bring a sudden cardiac arrest, but mainly the cause behind it is 70% of the times is a heart attack. So, so the, 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 the symptoms that a person will get before you get a sudden cardiac arrest is not very classical to a person who is getting symptoms of a heart attack. So in a sudden cardiac arrest, because it's going to be very sudden, so they'll just have you can just find that someone has been very well, but then they'll just say, I, I, I have a little bit of a chest discomfort, or I can feel my heart is beating fast, we call that palpitations, or they feel I, I'm feeling a little bit lightheaded, you know, and then suddenly you just see them uh, collapse. So this is it. Sometimes a cardiac arrest does not come with uh, really um, a warning sign, and it just happens, and the luck is that someone who is near you will give you the basic care as you are rushed to a hospital where advanced care will be given. So once you are in a hospital, your airway will be secured and medicines will be given that will now assist to restore your rhythm back. So basically, so this, so, so basically the risk factors for a heart attack sometimes are the same risk factors that lead to a sudden cardiac arrest. So what are the risk factors? So this is when people who have hypertension, people who have diabetes, people who have high levels of cholesterol and they have not been uh, treated, uh, they are not taking care of their condition. So all these factors lead you to possibly developing a uh, risk factor to get a heart attack, you know, and then also when you have a heart condition that has possibly been not been known, maybe you have a problem in your heart valve, maybe you have an enlarged heart, you know, so these are the risk factors and these are the things that predispose you to getting such an event. So, um, so, coming, so coming to the prevention of this kind of a problem is like really taking care of all the conditions you have. So you want to make sure if you are hypertensive, you are, you are taking care of your blood pressure well. If you're diabetic, you're taking care of your diabetes well. You want to avoid uh, habits that, that are toxic to your heart, which includes smoking, which includes alcohol use, okay? And uh, you want to take care of your diet, uh, avoid uh, f foods and uh, that are high, high in cholesterol. You want to keep exercising regularly. So that this gives a good health to your heart and this uh, prevents you from getting um, such events. So you see the difference where what happens is that in a sudden cardiac arrest, the death is imminent. It can happen if help is not given. But while you're in a heart attack, this is a slow process, okay? So basically in a heart attack, your blood vessel is getting blocked. So basically you have high levels of cholesterol and uh, they are slowly, slowly causing a blockage in your heart. So that those symptoms are progressive. So these people, so when you're going to get a heart attack, uh, this you can predict. So you'll know someone who is diabetic, someone who's not exercising, someone who is obese, and then they come and tell you they're getting chest pains. Okay, this is a classical sign. It radiates to the left side of your shoulder, to the left side of your hand. Sometimes they become sweaty. Sometimes uh, they get this uh, um, dull and sharp chest pains. You know, so this will this does give us a hint that this person is having some issue in their heart vessels, okay? And sometimes uh, when you, when someone gets heart attack, it does not lead to immediate death. There's always a time frame. You will get time that uh, the, the person will have time to be rushed to a hospital and uh, treatment will be will be given and most likely we will not lose a patient. We will not, we will not see them pass away, but maybe it can leave them with a disability, maybe a poor quality of life because now it leaves you with a heart that is not functioning well and your quality of life goes low because you cannot function as you could before you know so this is where the difference comes so a heart attack again the risk factors what we've said they are the same having all these diseases not controlling them well not looking into your diet and the prevention of a heart attack is still the same so that you want to make sure you're controlling your conditions well you're exercising well you're eating well and this will make sure that you don't get such an event yeah, so this is the main difference between a cardiac arrest and a heart attack, yeah.